thank you very much for the kind introduction. And this session will be hand, uh, hand, hand out uh, session, so I would like to be interactive. So I would like you to participate in the uh, work, some works. Okay. So my name is Rui Yoshida, and I will uh, give you so interactive session today. And this uh, session, the main goal of this session is reflect on flipped, flipped classroom, and also uh, please learn active learning. And after, however, many of you are very uh, familiar with active learning, so <laughs> I think it's very introductory introduction to the uh, active learning. So please uh, allow for that. So after this session, you can describe overview of flipped learning, flipped classroom, and also after this session, you can describe overview of active learning and some techniques uh, in details. Okay. So after the introduction, I would like to talk about flipped classroom. I would like to summarize flipped classroom, and then I will uh, talk about active learning and summarize that. So this is my introduction. So my name is Rui Yoshida. So I am a project assistant professor at the University of Tokyo. And the affiliation is super long. So <laughs> I will not <laughs> pronounce this, however. So I am engaged in uh, professional development and education, educational technology. And my background is, as uh, the introduction, my background is computer science and biomedical engineering, so my background is engineering. However, I changed my career thanks to Future Faculty Program, which is the best program I have ever attended. And now, <laughs> now I'm here. So now I can provide uh, workshops to faculty members, and also I uh, provide courses to undergraduate students. And so email address is here. So if you have any questions about active learning or flipped classroom, please feel free to email me. Then I would like you to introduce yourself in groups. So before introducing yourselves in groups, I hope uh, you, I would like you to summarize the impression of flipped classroom uh, according to the previous sessions. So what you have heard so far, okay? So at first, I would like you to, to summarize those, summarize the impression alone, one minute, for one minute. So do you think the flipped classroom is effective or do you want to introduce the flipped classroom into your course? So something like that. So would you summarize the impression for one minute by yourself, alone? After that, I would like to, you to share those in groups. So I would take one minute. So would you create groups? So two, two, two or three people in groups, would you create groups now? Can you can create? Yeah, you can talk uh, in the uh, pebbles, yes. OK, so please introduce yourself in your group and name, affiliation, and impression of flipped classroom. So I will take four minutes. So please uh, introduce yourself. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I would like to share in whole session, OK? Thank you for uh, discussing. Thank you. So would you, sh would you share the discussion in your group? <laughs> So we discussed the uh, if you have good resources and time and uh, time, probably we can you can implement the flip classroom in in, uh, in a very effective way. And also we talked about um, uh, it may be a bit difficult to do uh, use the flip uh, classroom method for the beginner level uh, language class because the students, this is the first time for them to study the language, and then it's uh, probably more effective for teachers to do, to, to give the lecture um, in a natural classroom. So I think that's two, these two uh, uh, things that we get in this group work. Thank you very much. 
yeah, we need to resource, we need resources to yeah, implement flipped classroom. So yeah, I think one program is that. So I think there is a discussion time after those, after these sessions. I would like to talk about that uh, program. And also, uh, you said that so the introductory lesson you cannot uh, you sh you think you should not use flipped flipped classroom. No, well, we're not quite saying you should not, but I think it's a bit difficult to figure out how we can do that uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in the actual. You know, uh, we're talking about language class, uh, teaching class, so we can't really figure out how we can, we can really imagine how we can do that. Uh, thank you very much. So I think uh, it not have to be, uh, we do not have to uh, flip all of the classroom uh, contents, so we can partially uh, export uh, some uh, contents, and then we can uh, introduce some activity, learning activities into our in-class session. So I'd like to talk about those uh, active learning techniques here. So thank you for the sharing. And I hope uh, this work uh, will be a little bit summarized of uh, this uh, symposium. And for, at first, I'd like to introduce a very, very overview uh, con conceptual uh, concept of flipped classroom. However, uh, Dr. Kasanov uh, told the concept, so I don't have to talk about a um, lot of things. So flipped classroom is, flip, is to flip in and out of class, so which means, so in traditional classroom, teacher only talks, 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 and students just uh, listen to him or her. Then after the class, uh, students are engaged in assignment or solving advanced problem. However, uh, whereas in flipped classroom, uh, before the class, students learn basic knowledge, and then uh, in class, they discuss or they solve uh, advanced topic. Uh, yes, and, and so that, that is the flipped uh, classroom. So thanks to this uh, structure, uh, students can uh, learn deeper uh, in class uh, compared to the traditional style. So there are uh, some examples here. So if you are interested, please uh, leave this. And you have, I think you have handouts there. And what I want to mention uh, in this slide is, so there are a lot of uh, advantages of a flipped classroom. So some, uh, one class says that passing rate uh, is increasing. And one said that uh, there was a score, there was, the score on test was increasing, and there, are, there is a, another, another person said that uh, the attitude, the learning attitude was increasing. The learning attitude of student were uh, enhanced uh, thanks to the uh, flipped learning. And I would like to mention that uh, this great, great guide so flipped classroom field guide. So I uh, use, I retrieved these examples from flipped classroom field guide. And this field guide is very, very great uh, resource for implementing uh, flipped classroom. And uh, many faculty, many faculty members at Stanford University uh, contributed to create this field guide. And there are a lot of information fruitful uh, information here. So if you are interested in uh, implementing a flipped classroom, uh, please uh, leave that. And they also show uh, great golden rules of flipped classroom. And there are th main, mainly three, main three uh, golden rules. So one is that highly, so effective flipped classroom needs uh, highly structured design of in-class. And second is that a significant amount of learning activities, so which is active learning activities. And the third one is heavily incentive for out of class work. So like grading in class activities, like uh, quizzes. I think uh, Dr. Utwards uh, class 
were uh, uh, covering all of them. So <laughs> I think <laughs> his work, his classroom is one of the perfect examples of this uh, golden rule. So I think I have nothing <laughs> to say anymore <laughs> here. So please uh, read this field guide if you are interested in uh, implementing the flipped classroom. So there are, so we need, so I would like to talk about three of them, all of, all three of all of them. However, I have time, uh, my time is limited. So I would like to talk about learning activity, just learning activities. So which means uh, active learning. So active learning is a very, very vague word. However, Bonwell and Aysen, who popularized the term active learning, uh, say that active learning involves students in doing things and think, thinking about the things they are doing. So in general, so active learning is, uh, active learning is the um, concept. So when a uh, student are uh, engaged in uh, work or retrieving knowledge and solving the advanced uh, problem, so they are active learning. So compared to the traditional style, uh, students are very, very passive because students only listen to a teacher. teacher. However, active learning means uh, their at active attitude is important and active attitudes enhance learning. So there is some, uh, there is one, many research evidences uh, for effect of active learning, and I would like to share one of those. And this is uh, research from Science. So Science is a very, very famous uh, science paper, uh, journal of Science. And this is about the lecture of introductionally uh, physics for undergraduate students. So what the researcher did was comparing two lectures, two classrooms. So one, one teacher has very experienced experience, and he gave just a lecture, so one directional lecture. And the other, a less experienced teacher gave interactive class. And those two lecturers, those two teachers uh, discussed that topic and set the goals of courses. So they, decided the goals together. So, and after that, they uh, teach in parallel. And after the courses, uh, the student were assessed by the same test. And this is the graph uh, of the result. So distribution of scores on test. So horizontal axis means a score on test and vertical axis means number of students. And I think it is very significant change, significant difference, which means, so lecture by, so those who uh, are, those who, the students who have passed lecture by an experienced teacher scored five, five points on average. So uh, max, uh, the maximum point is 12. Whereas uh, in those who are engaged in interactive class scored uh, 11 or 10 on average. So it is a very huge, it is a very huge uh, difference in outcome, student outcome. So what I want to say is if we can, if we can implement an effective active learning classroom, uh, the learning outcome uh, become more higher. So, so yeah, it is the, one of the best, one of the best outcomes. However, there are a lot of uh, evidences uh, of effects of active learning. So s sometimes seven uh, peak, peak at seven. However, but in general, active learning can enhance students' learning. The, there are a lot of evidences here. So this is one of the evidence. So if we know the effect of the active learning techniques, 
if we do not know about the particular methods, we cannot implement uh, engaging classroom. So I would like to introduce some techniques or some methods here. And one is very easy one. And I think you, all of you are uh, introducing this method uh, that I would like to introduce. So questioning, quest just questioning. Uh, so ask questions to students. So you can question, you can ask questions to all students or ask in group or you can ask individual student. And there are uh, two types of question, and closed or open. So closed question has choices. So students do not have to describe their thoughts. Whereas open, open question means there is no choices. So students have to think about the response to the uh, question. So open in general, open question is difficult, more difficult than a uh, closed one. And the way to us, there are handraising or explanation. And I would like to share the points to implement. So clarify the intent, so why you are asking, and content the question. And to make it difficult in steps. So if you question, uh, if you ask a very, very difficult question at first, the student's motivation will be decreasing. So I would like you to make it difficult in steps. So the time, it is not time consuming. So it is very easy to introduce into your classroom. And it is also uh, capable for a large class lecture. And I would like to share two more methods, two more methods. And I would like to you to uh, experience one of those. And I think you have experienced this uh, method, think pair share. Think pair share means to think about a one topic and alone and discuss in pairs. And I think it is very, very, uh, fam I think it is very, very useful for Japanese students because Japanese students are very shy, so they cannot uh, speak at loud at first. So if we have, t uh, we make some time to think uh, about the topic, they can uh, think or they can write down, and after that, they can discuss in pairs. So I will use, I will always use uh, think pair share for Japanese students. If <laughs> It's not for Japanese students. We don't, I don't think we need think uh, phase, however. But I think uh, Japanese, for Japanese students, I think Pesha is a very uh, great way to make them engaged. So there are many points to implement. So assist in making pairs. So many Japanese students uh, do not want to make pair by themselves. So we have to assist in making pairs, or we have to decide who to speak first. I don't know why it happens, but <laughs> we, we, need to, we need to do this. So like uh, I will say, so please uh, talk first by the nearest person to me. <laughs> then uh, the, talk, the students who will talk will be decided, so I use this technique, or a uh, person sitting on the right would, be, would talk first, can be uh, one of the solutions. And if you have time, sharing discussion to the whole. And please provide feedback. Just uh, listen to their uh, discussion and go, not, not uh, go on the session, but please, uh, listen to the discussion and please feedback uh, to them. So think pair share is also uh, capable for uh, large class lecture. However, it takes a little bit time. It takes about 10 minutes for thinking and sh pair sharing and whole sharing. It takes about 10 minutes. So you can, you have to choose, you have to choose an important topic to use this method. So 
at last, uh, peer instruction, I think Dr. Kasanov used. And it is the interactive teaching method developed by Eric Mazel in early 1990s. And the steps are, so at first, me, uh, teacher will uh, give a mean lecture or students prepare for the lectures. And in class, uh, they are answering, they, are, they answer to multiple choice question, which is called concept test. Then uh, they vote and peer discussion, and then they revote. And after the uh, voting, uh, teacher explanation, ex explain the explain the answers to the concept test. So it is it fits for all large class. It fits for large class and acquiring knowledge. So I would like you to experience this <laughs> method. So it's now it's <laughs> now it's time to uh, learn physics. <laughs> concept test. So a car pushes a broken truck to the town. So it is really weird situation, <laughs> but <laughs> I will accept this. So when the car is accelerating and pushing the, pushing the truck, so there are five choices. A, B, C, D, E. A, pushing force by the car, pushing force by the car, is equal to the pushing back force by the truck. It is A. B is pushing force by the car is less than the pushing back force. C is the, the other. And D is because the engine, the because, because the engine is broken, there is no pushing back power by the truck. So E is there is no power between the car and the truck. So I hope you, to think about the right, correct choice. And I give you the, this uh, boarding, boarding board. It is very analog. <laughs> <laughs> However, you can introduce uh, very easily into your classroom. And I also uh, think it's good to use technology because I heard uh, Dr. Woodward use Socrative. So I just <laughs> create the Socrative question. So if you are interested in using the uh, technology, uh, please uh, read QR code or type this URL and go to the Socrative and you can answer with the smartphone or tablet or PC. So if you are interested, please uh, go to the Socrative. And the room number is FQMGDSEU. So if you are interested, please go to the Socrative and uh, you can answer in this form. Uh, you can answer in this form. However, it is much easier for me to <laughs> use <laughs> this um, card. So do you decide what you choose? So please uh, fold it two times. And would you give me the, OK. So would you give me the, would you give me your answer? OK, OK. Did you, not, not, not discussion. <laughs> no discussion yet. OK, OK. So three, two, one, please hold your answer. Please hold your answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. OK, OK. So now I would like you to discuss your answer. Uh, not, not discuss, but share your answer. And if you are confident with uh, your answer, please uh, persuade the other people <laughs> to change to your answer. <laughs> May I, <laughs> may I understood? So please discussion the correct answer. And if you are confident, please push away, push away. <laughs> so thank you for the discussion. Thank you for the discussion. So I would like you to revote, revote the answer. So you can change your answer. You can change your answer. 
And so if you are interested in using a smartphone, please uh, use uh, the smartphone to uh, answer, submit your answer, please, now. So I opened, I opened the Socrative to make you can answer the question in Socrative. So if you are interested in using Socrative, please uh, submit your answers to the system, please. Room, a uh, room name. Room name is uh, if you have uh, the slides, you have the room number in your handouts, and F, F Q N G D S E U. Uh, sorry, I, I have to, I had to mention about this. So there is a code in your. I think there is a code in your handouts. F N F Q N G D S E U. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now, I would like you to use this analog one. <laughs> so you can use uh, analog techniques and digital techniques uh, uh, according to your preference. So do you uh, decide your, do you decide it, did you decide your answer? So would you, uh, would you show your answers please? So three, two, one, please. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> it is, oh, the A answers are very, uh, in, the number of the A answer was increased, I think. Thank you very much, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. So, uh, this is Epoch Cam software, Epoch Cam. So, we can use a smartphone as document camera. So if you install a software in smartphone and PC, and smartphone and PC are in the same network, you can connect. Uh, you can connect and you can share the camera view to PC. So sometimes I use this software. So if you are interested, please uh, use this software. So there are a lot of <laughs> A answers. So. The answer, the answer is A, <laughs> as you, <laughs> as you mentioned. And why, so there, so it is, there, there is uh, two main uh, reasons, not, not two main reasons, but two uh, topics. So there is a law of action and reaction. So which means if you push, you will be pushed back uh, pushed back for the same amount of power. This is a, a basic law of physics, so we cannot uh, change this uh, law. However, I think you are, not, uh, you are not convinced by saying this is law. So <laughs> I would like to, you to, uh, I would like to uh, explain a little bit more. So when you think about the forces, you have to focus on one object, one object, okay? So if we focus on the truck, so there is a pushing power and the friction power by tire because the engine is broken. So why truck is moving forward is because uh, put the pushing power is bigger than friction power. So now we uh, refocus on the car. So there is a pushing back power. However, uh, the, the engine is on. So the power pushing uh, through the friction is more, much bigger than pushing back uh, power. So the car is moving forward. So there is a two, uh, there is two points here. So there is a law of action and reaction. And the other thing is when we think about the forces, we have to focus on one object and think about the forces and uh, which is bigger or uh, smaller. Okay, so there is a, uh, so this is a peer instruction. So it's like physics <laughs> classroom. So. What do you think about this? I think if I just tell you it is because uh, law of action and reaction, then I, I can move on without your discussion. I think 
your uh, learning will not be deepened. Deepen. So, which, uh, so the research evidence which I showed before used a lot of these techniques, peer instruction techniques. So, now this is a peer instruction. So, and the developer of peer instruction uh, said that you have to change your behavior based on the correct rate, correction rate, because there, if there are a lot of, uh, there, if there are no correct answers, if uh, you, it's, it will be a waste of time if you make students talk, because it will direct to the other, the wrong direction uh, to the concept. So if the correct rate is uh, less than 30%, revisit concept. And if uh, more than 70%, let's proceed next, because many of the students uh, know the concept. And between those, uh, please discuss, make them discuss, and please report. The, the Eric Mazu team uh, showed this uh, strategy. So it takes less than 10 minutes, so it can be easily introduced into your classroom. And the point is the quality of concept test matters. So you need to, you need to increase the quality of the concept test. And you can use in large class, because Eric Mazel's uh, classroom has 200 and 300 students with, uh, in class. In class, uh, there are 200 or 300 students there. So you can use uh, it in large class. So uh, the, at the end of my uh, session, I'd like to emphasize the key points of active learning. So please clarify the goal of class and connect it to the activities uh, because Sometimes uh, activity itself can be goal, but it is not the goal of learning or classes. So please do not set activity itself as the goal of classes. And please, if uh, students hesitate to participate in the work, please explain the merit and advantages of active learning. So collaborative active activities, collaborative learning activities uh, promote uh, learning. And there are a lot of bunches, bunches of uh, evidences here. So if you are interested, please uh, read this uh, reference. And please clarify instructions. So that is uh, the key points of active learning. Uh, and at last, I would like to share the, this is a Socrative interface. So we can, <laughs> now we are uh, 76 percentage of uh, correct answers. The, uh, the first one was, ah, sorry, first one was 40% and 60% for C. So the correction rate was increased uh, during the discussion. So if you are interested, please use the Socrative uh, services. So in summary, so flip classroom is to flip in and outside of class, and there are golden rules. So if you are interested, please uh, read the uh, field flipped, learning, flipped classroom field guide. And I introduced a little bit uh, active learning, and the effect is uh, we, can make, we can make students learn more effectively uh, compared to traditional style. And there are many methods, so you can uh, search in websites. And there are key points for active learning. So if you are interested, uh, I put the references on the last slide, uh, so please uh, read those references. So this is my uh, session. Thank you very much.